What's going on, Magic community? Man, did you see those March of the Machine Aftermath collector boxes that were leaked online? If you haven't seen those yet, go check them out. Uh, just Google... Uh, actually, I'll probably try to put a link in the description below uh, to the guy that uploaded those. Anyway, uh, let's get into another box of March of the Machines uh, as we're getting through this March of the Machines case that we still have yet to, to finish. Okay, let's dig right in here. Uh, we're going to make this one a little bit quick because, uh, we, I don't know, I, I figure you guys that are joining me, you like to listen to, some of y'all like to listen to me ramble and talk, but the others, you're just here to see awesome cards that are open, and I get it. That's completely fine by me. So, like I said, uh, somebody leaked March of the Machine Aftermath collector boxes online. Uh, gentleman, not sure where he acquired them, nor do I really want to know, to be honest with you, but... Uh, you can go check those out if you don't mind spoiling things for yourself um, <clears throat> and see what some of those uh, cards are in that set. I personally just hit it Sigu and Kyari. Uh, personally, I'm not so sure that I um, think the set's worth it. There's too much duplication. Uh, a lot of uh, the set the set size is too small. That's that's the problem. Okay, guys, Brima's Blight of Oreskos. Love that because this is one of the commanders I wanted to build. So happy to have that in extended art foil. This is the, one of the face card of the commander decks that just came out. And it uh, looks like we're hitting an etched foil here. Emery Lurker of the Lock and etched foil. Not a bad one to hit for sure. <clears throat> so we'll sleeve up this Brima's because I am going to be playing with him. I like building a Phyrexian deck and then being able to incubate constantly so i'll have to find some cool ways to build around him uh, he looks like a lot of fun to play <clears throat> speaking of which what are you guys looking forward to playing i gotta know tell me in the comments down below what is it that in this set that you're looking forward to building the most in commander now if you're not a commander player uh that's fine too just let me know in uh whatever you do play whether that is modern pioneer standard or legacy or even vintage what in this set do you look forward to the most as being able to add to one of your decks? All right, so Ancient Imperiosaur, Urabrask, okay, so that's a normal Urabrask. Uh, I'm sorry, that is the Showcase Oil Slick, not normal. This is from the set that flips into the Great Work. So that is that awesome enchantment, Saga enchantment there, though. And then Bright Palm Soul Awakener, so double mythic here. We'll set that down there. Finn the Fang Bear. <clears throat> oh, look at that Yargle. <laughs> that Halo Foil Yargle. Ah, I gotta love that art on that one, though, with the stained glass. Love that evil looking frog. <laughs> Errant and Giada. And this is our foil there with that showcase friend that they used for Streets of New Capenna. Very disappointed that they didn't actually make this gilded foil. Like, I don't know why they didn't. They gave it that, that kind of treatment. This card is also shifted. As you can see, it's where it's cut on the sheet. It is shifted to the right quite a bit. All right, looking at Thalia, Guardian of Thraben in that foil uh, showcase frame. So very nice. All right, so piles, piles, piles. I guess that'll go right up there. Well, I'll go in the Multiverse Legends slot. So there you go. <clears throat> All right, so this is uh, have yet to hit a serialized card. Personally, I'd rather hit one of the serialized um, Praetors that they came out with in this set because the art is unique to the serialized version only. And it's very cool on a lot of them, especially Elish Norn and Shieldred. And I would, and well, Jinja Tax is pretty good too, but I would really like to hit one of those over something like a Ragavan or uh, a tra uh, you know, attracts a Praetor's War or something like that. I mean, that's just personal opinion. I'd like to have one of those unique arts. There's Breach the Multiverse foil. Zergo and Ojutai in that uh, showcase frame there, that black and white. This is the kind of frame that they, basically they came out with a frame that they would have used had they started using booster fund treatments back when Cons of Tarkir was announced or launched as a set. This is the Dragon uh, wing frame, which is pretty cool. I actually really like how they did that. Conclave Sledge Captain. Maybe we'll get that frame again when we go back to uh, the cons plane, which maybe maybe this is kind of like they're kind of showing us a little bit of the future there. <clears throat> Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive. 
Breach of the Multiverse foil again, this time extended art, and a Grim Grin Corpseborn foil uh, showcase. This is really freaking cool. I love Grim Grin. That art is super sweet for him. And uh, I have a deck that I never completed that I did start that I need to finish. So I think I will be using this version as my commander. And maybe that'll motivate me to finish that deck. Uh, let me know, guys. Talk to me while I'm opening these cards. Give me a comment down below. How many commander decks have you started and didn't finish? Are you like me? Have you started like three or four and they're just kind of sitting there and you haven't quite finished them or fleshed them out yet? Very curious if I'm not the only one there. And then, also, how many commander decks do you have? Do you have one or do you have like a ton? It's usually either one or like a whole bunch. It's never like two or three. <clears throat> from what I've seen, though. Invasion of uh, Go Gobacon, which flips into a light shield array. The beginning of your end step, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that attacked this turn. Sacrifice light shield array. Creatures you control gain hexproof and indestructible to on the turn. Uh, look at the top. Uh, target opponent's hand, you exile them. Okay, interesting. Had not yet seen that card, to be honest with you, because I missed a few things in spoiler season. There's Fairy Mastermind. Excellent card to open in that extended art slot. Sitting at like 10, 15 bucks, I think. Rowan's Talent. Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive, this time in the foil um, stained glass. Imadi, Celebrant of Bounty. Bloated Processor there in the foil extended art. Looks like this has also shifted to the right a bit on the art. And Obosh, the Prey Piercer. Let's see. We're going to put Obosh right there. And move right on to the next pack. <clears throat> Nothing super spicy or special in that pack. But we've only had a couple of Mythics, I think. So uh, we've got some more to go on that. And hopefully some really cool Halo foils. Uh, since I have not hit a crazy Mythic Halo foil in one of these yet. All right. At least I don't remember. Realm Breaker, the Invasion Tree. Crazy, crazy card that allows you to mill and steal lands from your opponent and then ultimate for getting all your Praetors out of your deck. So if you guys are going to build a uh, EDH deck, uh, commander deck around this card, let me know. I'm very curious um, if you guys are able to pull off 10 Sacrifice and then go get all the Praetors from your deck and put them all into play, which would be nuts with all the different versions we have. Hidden Sigu and Kairi. Kairi. <clears throat> so it's that Ogre Demon Dragon, and that's the showcase frame. Wildfire Awakener. Imadi, Celebrant of Bounty, again. Rayev, Mastersmith. Ayara, Widow of the Realm. And for that Multiverse Legend slot, we are looking at Fire Song and Sunspeaker. So, very nice uh, art on a lot of these cards. Love them. And not the best cards that we open in that pack, but the art on these is just gorgeous. And I'm a huge fan of Magic the Gathering art, just in general. Uh, I definitely have some favorite artists as of lately. Um, Martina Fakova is really good. I really like her art a lot on what she's done. Um, so if you haven't checked her out, go check her out. She's done uh, some really awesome pieces, some Soren art recently from the... Um, <clears throat> not Crimson. Well, maybe... Uh, was it Crimson Vow? Crimson Vow. Yeah, it was. And uh, she has done the most recent Liliana of the Veil, vale, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that was her art. Um, I actually want to check it because I don't want to be wrong. I'm, I'm positive, though. I say I'm positive, but here I am uh, searching it up. Uh, that's because there's multiple versions of it. But uh, if I am correct, it is, yes, Martina Fakova. She is... Done the most or new at this, the normal uh, booster pack version of Liliana the Veil vale that she did. Anyway, I'm stopped rambling. Sorry, guys. I got off on a tangent there. But uh, if you haven't checked out her art, it's absolutely stunning. Go check it out. Zergo and Ojutai there in the Mythic Foil, Pack Foil version. Tribute to the World Tree, Deluxe Dragster. Quindy Pride of Ephemerif, Zodahedron Glider, Galta and Maverin in the very unique... Uh, showcase foil. I don't know if I'm a fan of that particular showcase art there. I think I'd rather see the creatures not them emblazoned on some kind of coin or token. Anyway, let's see what we got. Yorion Sky Nomad in Halo foil. <clears throat> Boy, that's a gorgeous card. All those Halo foils are gorgeous. What can I say? 
So hopefully we'll get another Halo Foil. This time a Halo Foil Mythic. I don't think I've opened one yet. Maybe I did. Oh, maybe I did. Maybe I think I did one of the Multiverse Legends in one of the previous videos. I think I did a uh, on one of my shorts uh, an Elish Norn, which was nice. Okay, going into Invasion of <coughs> Fiora. Destroy all legendary creatures, destroy all non-legendary creatures, and flips into Marquesa Resolute Monarch, which is a crazy minute of death touch of bringing cards back. Um, let's see, remove all counters from it to one target permanent. To be in your keep if you have damage since you last turn, draw a card. Oh, it draws you cards. I, I thought she brought cards from the graveyard back. So anyway, nice uh, there on that little rare. Kogla and Yadaro, Firemane Commando, Graph Weatherlight, Zada, Hegen Grinder, and Halo Foil for the Uncommon. Pile on. Destroy a target creature or planeswalker, surveil two, and it has Convoke as an instant. Not bad. Could it potentially cost you one black mana? Or actually, I guess zero. I guess you can invoke the whole thing. As long as you have at least one black creature. All right. And a Mythic Elsh Norn Grand Cenobite in a foil. Not Halo Foil, but nonetheless, it is a definitely... Um, it's definitely a popular Praetor from the original, uh, Praetors that came out. Elish Norn is played all over the place and will forever maintain some sort of value there. All right, getting into that second half here of the box. Let's see if we can get into it just a little bit quicker for you guys. And then, uh, don't forget to check the link in the description below, guys. We are always giving away something on the channel. When this video gets uploaded, I don't know, so there will probably be a new giveaway by the time this gets uploaded. Just go ahead and check the link below and find out what that giveaway is. Grafted Butcher, Rona Herald of Invasion, Excise the Imperfect, Timorat, Chosen of Death, Renata Called to the Hunt, Archangel, Elspeth, a Planeswalker making an appearance. Totally forgot this was in the set. Really cool art. Absolutely love it. And I think the only version of this art, I do not think there is a Halo foil version of this. Very nice. Let's see what that last card is in the back. Jingat, Gigantha, the Wellspring, in that foil um, Multiverse Legend slot there. All right, we'll sleeve up Elspeth. Looks like, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I love the extended art on this one. I think a lot of people are going to like this, and all you angel lovers are going to want this for sure for Commander ADH. Um, I'm curious how how low in price this has probably gotten since release. Uh, it's probably going to hold a $10 to $20 price tag, but if it gets pretty low, I would I would possibly buy those up just for just for collector aspect, uh, because even if it's not... Let me see what it does. Four, <clears throat> four loyalty, uh, plus one created one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. Okay, so she can protect herself. Uh, minus two, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It becomes an angel and gains flying. So that's permanent. It's not till end of turn. And minus six, return all non-land permanents with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So um, not necessarily super relevant in any specific build, but a good uh, value engine, I guess, for generating uh, counters and giving creatures flying. And then, of course, protecting yourself with lifelink soldier tokens. Uh, third ability is a lot more of a build around ability because you need to be able to have a deck that has a lot of many value three or less, uh, to really interact with that. So, uh, nonetheless, it's angel on the art. Um, so there's going to be angel collectors that just want that from the perspective of, like I said, collecting, if anything else, love this. Cause this is like my favorite of the, uh, there's a swamp and then this planes that is my favorite in this set. This is like. Floating Lands there kind of reminds me of like Skies of Arcadia, a uh, video game for the Sega Dreamcast if you never played it, where you fly around all these different cities that are floating in the in the clouds. There's Teferi's Talent. Complete the Circuit. Filigree Vector. Rada. Shanna Sisse's Legacy. It's Holly Primal Conqueror. This one flips, I know, into, uh, into something else here. Let's see what it is. Yes, Itali Primal Sickness, which is a crazy trample, indestructible, poison counter. Uh, th th this it, it, total beast, total beast of a card. And we have a Gorklaw Terra of Calcisma in the Multiverse Legends slot. We have three packs left in this box. Still have not had a serialized card 
at all from any of the boxes we've opened. This is box number five out of six. So we're almost through an entire case, but you're not guaranteed to get a serialized card on a case. So <clears throat> you could go through multiple cases and not hit one. Although statistically, you'll hit at least one in like three or four cases, three cases. There's an Itali again, Primal Conqueror. Very nice sort of once and future following behind it right there. Uh, not foil, but still really cool to open that. And there's a Linda and Azor. All right. Or Igna Rune Eyes, a Timorant, a Zephyr Singer, and a Shieldred Whispering One etched foil. So this is really cool. Um, man, it almost looks silver the way they etched foiled that with the black cards. That is crazy. It's like a it's like a platinum type color. Very nice on the etched foil shieldred. We will take it. Two packs left. Still chance at glory. Because you never know what will happen in a Magic the Gathering when it comes to opening booster packs. Sometimes you get crazy surprise. Other times it's wah, wah, wah. All right. Rankle and Torbrin. Ancient Imperiosaur. Volpine Harvester. Jury Master of Review. There is an Agar the Freezing Flame in the Halo foil. Firemean Commando from the Commander Deck Series foil. And we have... Do we have a Halo foil? A Tesa Karlov in the... Multiverse Legend slot there in foil. Very nice. All right, last pack magic, guys. Don't forget to check the link in the description below to enter the current giveaway. Whatever that may be, I don't know what it will be because uh, this video will probably be a little bit delayed uploading. But when I get it out, there will be a giveaway, as there always is. So just make sure, whatever it is, to enter it. Link in the description below. Last pack here of the box. Going into an Invasion of Chandelar. <clears throat> a Baral and carries up behind it. When Invasion of Chandelar enters the battlefield, return up to three target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Wow. And then a Leyline Surge. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. That is definitely a mythic card if I ever saw one. I'm going to sleeve that. Pretty nice little Invasion card there. Uh, cost five to play that Siege. All right, there is Brawl and Carry Zev, a Chivalric, Chivalric Alliance, a Yargol, Daxos, Glistening Dawn, last but not least, can we get it? Can we hit something crazy special? Let's get a little peek at the side here. Does not appear to be a Halo foil. It is Harobi Death's Whale. So nothing super special. Not a bad box, though. Definitely some cool cards. You got that. Uh, Shieldred, the Whispering One. Uh, you've got Yorion, Elishnorn, Grand Cinnabite, Grimgrin, really cool in foil. There's a etched foil Lurker, Emery Lurker, the lock. And then you have the Elspeth here, Archangel, and Bremaz, which I'm looking forward to building. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining me for box number five of our case of six. If you have not checked out the other videos, go check them out. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button, really helps us out. Check our link for in the video description below for a current giveaway, whatever that may be at the time of uploading this video. As always, guys, it goes without saying, I always say it every video. Say it with me. Love, peace, and chicken grease, guys. It's Jason signing out.